now we are coming to the very last uh, uh, paper in this symposium. It is from here from Sedgwick. The title is Adsorption Induced Structural Changes of Supported Rhenium. The authors are Banshavi, Novak, and Choi Moshi. It will be presented by Dr. Banshavi. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, we have been studying in the laboratory the absorption induced proper uh, induced structural changes of the supported matter. The interaction of CO with supported rhodium has been the subject of many papers in the last decade. A renewed interest in this topic was initiated by the excess measurements of Prince and his co-workers. They demonstrated that the absorption of CO on a rhodium aluminum oxide catalyst led to the disruption of the small rhodium crystallite and to the formation of the isolated rhodium plus site. In all previous studies, we reported the CO and NO induced structural changes of supported rhodium, lithium, and iron region. At low temperature, the disruption of metal clusters were, were observed, and at higher temperature, the CO induced reductive agglomeration of metals was found. Infrared spectroscopy proved to be a convenient and sensitive method to follow these processes. On the first figure, I show briefly the results. The absorption of CO in increasing pressure shows two strong absorption band to the infrared spectra, an asymmetric and symmetric radiation frequency, showing that the rhodium plus sites absorbing two carbon monoxide molecules. It was, as I mentioned, low temperature at 300 Kelvin. Increasing the temperature, the CO has another effect, and in that case, from the twin structure, we reach the so-called linear structure of the rhodium crystallite, showing only one infrared band at higher temperature. Of course, at the same time, we can get another form on the surface, the so-called fridge form. Uh, summarizing with this equation, we can see that the isolated rhodium sites are formed due to the oxidative disruption effect of CO using the OH groups in this equation, but at higher temperature, about 470 degrees in the CO has, as I mentioned, an other effect, giving the rhodium crystallized showing the infrared the linear form. A recent independent chain confirmation of the CO induced changes in the valency state of the rhodium was provided by the XPS measurement. It can be seen that when we oxidize the rhodium and alumina, we get a peak around 380.6 electron volt, showing the oxidation state. When we reduce this function <coughs> using the hydrogen at 583 Kelvin, we have a shift down to 3.5 electron volt. When we admit 
fix it to our CO at low temperature, heating this gas for two hours, we have this value, 308.1. And when we use the CO at higher temperature, we choose two different speeds. The lower group to be the 306.8. This shows the change of the valency state of rhodium, proving us that some reduction happened during this high temperature interaction. As I mentioned in the other Latin metals, we found similar CO induced processes on ruthenium alumina and iridium alumina. In the case of ruthenium, the oxidative disruption was witnessed by the transformation of the band from this to this due to the rhodium CO crystallized band. To the and Reductive agglomeration of the ruthenium occurred above 500 Kelvin. In the other case of the iridium, the oxidative disintegration occurs at 200-300 Kelvin. Characterized by the development of the green band at 2090 to 2107 and 2010 to 2030 to the minus 1, showing the twin structure. The reductive agglomeration proceeds at higher temperature. It is indicated by the transformation of the above twin band to the single band band at 2050 to 2080 cm minus 1 attributed to the linear form. So this is the distance I read. After this short introduction, I continue my talk as a title of the lecture, the Rimium Carbon Monoxide Support. Different situation was well observed in this case. Briefly, I tell you shortly the circumstances that we made the experiment. We prepared the samples either ammonium-peronate or peronic acid by an integration method from aqueous solution, then dry the sample at 300 uh, 383 Kelvin, we press into self-supporting radars, and the other treatments were in situ in the reaction chamber. The oxidation generally occurred in 100 per oxygen for 30 minutes at 573 Kelvin, and the reduction was between this temperature range from 672 up to 12. 73 Kelvin. We used similar apparatus as Professor Lettinger showed this morning. We had a similar quartz tube. At the upper part, we had a permit, and at the bottom of the tube, we had the cell which we could cool down up to the liquid nitrogen temperature and we could warm up to the room temperature. So let's see the results. First, we had to study the reducibility of the vapor because we noticed that we reduced the sample below 670 degrees Kelvin at that time we didn't get any absorption of when we introduced CO into the system. So, with other supports also, we made the temperature program reduction processes to find out 
the right reaction range where we can reach the highly used renew content samples. We made it in one and five percent renew contents and we made some experiments after a heat treatment that 770 in that case we got another that peak at 853. But most of the experiments were made a highly reduced, I mean over a thousand Kelvin uh, degree Celsius. And in this figure I show the effect of the different pressure of CO, the reduced temperature was 1073, and the absorption temperature of the CO was 100 Kelvin. It can be seen that only one absorption band appeared in the infrared spectra, and we believe that this is the value which was at first 20, 20 or 30, but later on I believe that 10 per CO equals 20, 50 centimeters to the minus half. So we think that this is the so-called linear form and the medium crystal. When the absorption was followed during increasing the temperature from 98 Kelvin up to 293, we get nearly the same, but when the temperature reached 183 Kelvin, appeared new absorption bands on the infrared spectrum. And here, the room temperature, we get at least four different absorption peaks showing the values right here. When we absorb CO at higher temperature, 170 Kelvin, we also and we follow this absorption in time. After four, four hours, we will see another absorption peak on the infrared spectrum. When the absorption of CO occurred at room temperature and we follow in time the absorption, we could see the change and we found after three hours we had at least three different absorption bands and we have another absorption band around 1850 and we think that this is the former known which form of the CO absorption group. We have again we left the CO overnight in the system and the next morning we realized the other species, the other absorption bands, which appeared after this long absorption time. And when we finished the experiment in that region, it was in the one 180 minutes, so when we change something, we can follow in the next thing. So when we wait, we are waiting for one for three hours, and after we evacuated the system and we heat it up, we find two different absorption bands as normally. It was 2035 and 1926. And it turned out when we obtained continuous, when we are just guessing continuously the sample, these two absorption bands remained nearly the same for slightly increased this one. And it was stable under evacuation and heating up to 773 Kelvin. When we cooled down the sample and we readmitted again 10 to CO at room temperature, 
we got the last curve, which shows very few absorption properties of the sample. So probably there was no absorption at all. When the absorption took place at 473 Kelvin, we found a very fast change in the absorption bands. So after five minutes, maybe one minute, two, strongly developed these two absorption bands as in the other case as I showed. When we admit some water, it was a co-absorption experiment, we found at room temperature the heater immediately after we introduced the gas mixture into the reaction cell. These two absorption bands. And when the temperature was rise to 473 Kelvin, only the two 20, 30, and 1920 bands appear in the infrared spectra, showing that this is some other kind of surface species. Of course, we followed during these experiments not only this region between 20, 90, and 1800, but we continuously followed the change of the OH range of the spectrum. We didn't find any change up to room temperature during the absorption of carbon monoxide. But slightly, we got, as you can see on the different spectra, that something happened during, when we increased the temperature, during the CO absorption. So, and I don't want to repeat all the experiments which we found in the case of premium silica, premium titanium, and premium magnesia, but I will show some of them very briefly what happened in the case when we changed the support. In the case of renewable silica at room temperature, of course these are the different spectra, it is very difficult to realize the absor uh, absorption bands using the direct So the, according to the different spectra, we can tell that it is similar than, in this case, similar with the alumina system because increasing the time, we have quite a lot of absorption bands as we found in the case of rhesium alumina, showing that the surface species consist of more carbon monoxide. In the case of rhenium titania, at room temperature, we found similar, at, but slightly higher intensity were observed as we got in the rhenium alumina. In this case also, can be seen that we have a very strong intensity, but some others also appeared when CO absorbed at the surface. In the third support was medium magnesium, and in this case was the only difference with the other that in this case we got using three hours waiting for the other CO-medium species, 
but we didn't find any others, only one or twenty, twenty-eight, twenty-eight of the minus one. So, as far as you could see in the infrared spectra, there were much more absorption bands as we got in the road to looking in and I read you. As it is known, the rhenium has quite a lot of different rhenium carbonyl compounds, which are rather stable. We collected the vibrational frequencies in the rhenium carbonyl in a table. I have two tables. So when you look through these lines, you can see how rich is the rhenium carbonyl chemistry. I made a red mark here on the line, so it shows the rhenium carbonyl having two old groups has similar or in some experiments the same absorption bands as we found when we heated the sample at higher temperature. Continuing the table, we can see some other compounds. As you remember, we got, as we read the temperature, a car carbon monoxide rich uh, compound showing so many absorption bands. When you see these three absorption bands, line, you may realize that we got similar absorption bands at high temperature level. So, after this table and seeing the results, I made, we made a conclusion. So, you have seen so many absorption bands today, so I remind you now that when we absorb at low temperature, below 200 and 300 Kelvin, at the time we got this type of linear form, carbonyl absorption bands at 230. 20, 30, 24, 30, even 20, 50, 78, and the minus 1. So, when we increase the temperature, the CO has an effect that a structure changing occurs during the temperature range, giving a new a carbon monoxide rich surface compound, which shows these three absorption bands at 2058, 2305, and 1960, as I was showing during my session. But when we increase the temperature around 470 to 670 degrees Kelvin, and in this temperature range, I showed the OH range of the absorption bands in the, in the spectrum. So we believe that at this high temperature, of proceeds these, I will call reaction, giving a very stable service species, and we assigned it that that is the renewal three but when we study the other method method, as I started in the lecture, in that case we got a reductive agglomeration of the rhodium and iridium species, giving back the linear form of the rhodium crystal. But in this case, 
there is no theory used regarding conservation of premium as we put here this red mark and this reaction. Thank you for your attention. I'm interested to find the preferential formation of the linear cardinals on the metal surface after the treatment of high temperatures under the carbon monoxide. Is there any possibility of the, the carbon depositions on the metal surface under such kind of treatment to prevent all the breaking down? Unfortunately, we didn't detect them now because there is a possibility when you absorb on the metal surface a carbon monoxide that this proportionation proceeds giving carbon and carbon dioxide. But in this case, we didn't study the effect of this carbon, but the rhodium, uh, the rhenium, uh, the rhenium, the rhenium, the carbon is so stable. So maybe when the metal it was formed, I think there is no very strong effect if some part of the, the catalyst consists of carbon. Can you explain for a non-infrared person exactly what, what, what would have happened if you had gotten reductive agglomeration? I mean, I'm just trying to figure out exactly how that data shows. The last? Yeah, no. yeah. well, no. if you had gotten that, what would the, you would have gotten only one peak at a, at a lower wavelength, at a, at a lower frequency? Is that any? I mean, 19, uh, 2030 and 1920, yeah. that's. So if, if we have a CO-induced reductive yeah. agglomeration, now you, we should you would, have the first. Uh, uh, 22, 23 up to 2040 absorption band, the linear form. There should only be one peak. Only one peak. At what frequency would I expect it? I expect at, 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 this, at this frequency rate, the frequency rate, the 20, 30. The frequency 20, rate is okay, but you're saying the fact that there's two peaks at high temperature. Oh, but that is at the, at the the high temperature, the, at the high temperature in this region, yeah. we have another uh, surface species consists of three car carbon yields giving the two absorption bands. See, this one and this one. Okay. And, okay. And, and, okay. and, and I... Okay, so going back to the compounds and, and yeah. referring it to that. Okay. okay. And if you remember this, Surface of the You see, this is the OH group 2. And we believe that the OH group stabilizes in all case 2 to form rhodium tricarbons. So I think that's the, the reason that it's so stable. There are four arms in the surface races on the surface. I'm curious of this uh, uh, possibility to beat uh, uh, reductive agglomeration because it seems to me that this uh, uh, oxidative disruption would be a very nice way of uh, getting high dispersion for metals like, and I don't know of rhenium because I have no experience, but with ruthenium, for example, it's very difficult to get a high dispersion. And uh, we saw that maybe uh, using a support like a zeolite would help in uh, keeping the high dispersion. But do you have any experience with zeolitic supports on all these metals? Or do you have any other means to suggest uh, to beat the uh, reductive agglomeration? In the linear case? Uh, also in the other metals that we studied in Europe. I mean, rutinium, rhodium, I, I think in all three cases they proceed. Do you have always seen to any kind of possible 
there is a different effect when, when, when I reduct this uh, rhodium alumina or other rhodium compounds at high temperature and we absorb the carbon monoxide, for example, at room temperature, always we have only the linear form. But when the reduction temperature is low, around 300 degrees centigrade, at the time we always have the twin structure showing that the oxidative disruption occurred on the surface. But when the reduction temperature was very high, I mean about 400 degrees centigrade, at that time it is an agglomeration using the high temperature, and in that case when CO comes from the gas phase, at the first occasion at low temperature, room temperature, always the linear form is formed. But the, another effect when the temperature is high, and at high temperature we have that absorption. But so at that time we have this reductive agglomeration. That thing is what we have talked about. You did show that a slide. I mean, it shows the result of the rotating helium. So at high temperature, when we produce rutenium, one of the helium, I don't know what to say, rutenium or helium, one is the three, lower temperature, if you raise the temperature in the presence of CO, then the reverse process occurs, and finally you got back the rutenium, helium, crystallite, as indicated by the appearance of the linear one in CO or the three crystal in CO. So we were able to, to get back the rutenium, but aren't you suggesting that if you don't get reductive agglomeration, that you retain monodispersed rhenium atoms no, at 200 degrees? I think that's the question. Now, this is great if you could do this, because it means you can retain very high surface areas at very high temperature treatments. But rhenium is not a noble matter. The situation is different. So in this case, we managed to disrupt the rhenium rhenium bond and through these complicated rhenium carbon here, at higher temperature, even we have a lonely, uh, I mean, isolated helium, which is oxidized for the result to, to bond with it to a different or four, but I don't know. We have a different measurement. And, uh, but from that compound, we could not get back the rain metal because it is decomposing and leaving some rain oxide. So we could not get back the rain metal. Contrast to the rhenium, rhenium, helium. But if we keep if we keep this compound in the presence of CO at high temperature, or even vacuum, very high temperature, you can go in, you have that, yeah, and the main emotion is being formed, the dissociation of CO, and remember that we apply, we decompose this compound at 670 degrees or 770 degrees, and pull down the sample, and ask the real CO, no absorption that appears, so the main will became oxidized during the high temperature decomposition. Dr. Bucci? Uh, you reduce your samples always at a very high temperature. Uh, what is the reason for choosing this high temperature? Because you uh, showed in uh, your TPR measurement that uh, the reduction of radium is already uh, at very lower temperatures. The reason is that we always try to use high reduction temperatures because when we reduce lower temperatures than 1000 or 1200 Celsius, we didn't get so intense CO bands. So this system is rather complicated because to tell the truth that sometimes very difficult to explain what is the reason that we don't get high intensity absorption peaks because the rhodium, the rhenium structure on the surface is not so easy to reproduce as in the other noble metals. So rhodium, rhenium has quite a lot of stable oxides. So one of the oxides, the the oxidation state, I say, seven for rhenium. From that oxide, we can easily reach the highly reduced for rhenium. 
But when we have some other valence state, rhenium oxide, it's very difficult to reduce. So always there is a feeling that maybe we didn't do everything similarly because we don't have always the same surface of the rhenium support. The so that is one of the reasons that it's very difficult to reach the highly reduced sample. Thank you. I told you two remarks. Uh, I want to support this uh, result that the, uh, the rhenium aluminum oxide system was also studied uh, by ECS in Texas University And it was found that uh, you cannot get uh, rhenium zero uh, by hydrogen reduction below uh, 1,100 kelvin. The other result is when the CO was also the reduced rhenium, the binding energy of the 4FT or rhenium shifted to higher binding energy at 300 kelvin. It was an other surprising result when you beat the subsurface to 350 kelvin. The binding energy was much higher, so probably this uh, can be attributed to the formation of uh, rhenium pickup species, but we have to learn from this year because the uh, final state that can uh, compensate uh, our initial state of energy. The oxidative breaking of better metabolism should evolve to the dynamic <coughs> Aspect, but uh, many systems in the future are very difficult to learn. Did you observe the dihydrogen gas evolution uh, in your system? I do think. I do think. The oxidative gas is not reactive. It will always evolve the hydrogen gas. May I answer this question? Because the real one can be a little bit discussion about this problem because the question is up there. Perhaps all that we should detect hydrogen evolution, and and of course we as we we made a lot of attempts, and and not of unsuccessful attempts to detect hydrogen because because according to the first equation, the oxidative reduction should produce hydrogen. But I don't know can I discuss or not discuss? Then I just read the recent review recent one of the paper of Professor Zuckler, and finally he succeeded in the case of the rhodium zeolite to detect hydrogen. The surprising thing was that hydrogen evolved below room temperature. Earlier, we would have liked to detect hydrogen above room temperature, but uh, according to the recent results of the Sutler, which we did not see, he finally managed to detect hydrogen during the CO operation. He opposed this idea all the time, he said, no hydrogen, of course, I don't believe it, but now he detects it. Experiment I you know, just uh, generally people uh, want to use the sample after the hydrogen reduction. Uh, during the course, there could be a uh, hydrogen evolved. And then it is a metal to be uh, oxidized. So that uh, uh, we may <coughs> do some interaction with hydroxy group and the metal for the cluster. So that is uh, some experimental process is uh, some confusion. Bring so many people here together in second. But uh, please uh, wait, uh, uh, be careful that uh, uh, Professor Stone would uh, say something about some concluding remarks here. Well, I simply wanted to do two things. One is to congratulate you all on your stamina, having uh, survived the week in Budapest and now three very strong days here. I guess. We have seen about 100,000 uh, infrared spectra <laughs> since we uh, arrived in Budapest. We have heard a great deal, but there is still a great deal of truth uh, to be discovered. It uh, is the fact, I suppose, that we have uh, 
uh, come humbly here to Hungary to learn more. Uh, however humble we are, we at least have the presence of the recording angel. And uh, it is necessary, however, to say a very big thank you to uh, uh, Professor Shaw-Machine and also, if I may do so on your behalf, all of the team here in Seged who have worked so hard to uh, make these days so pleasant and so interesting for us. Uh, I guess many of us thought that uh, uh, the Budapest uh, Congress was uh, uh, the top so far as bringing so many people together and talking about so many different things. But here we have been able to focus on a shorter range of the uh, field and to do so in a most uh, interesting and I think very successful way. So, Fritz, if we may, we would like to congratulate you and the home team particularly, and also to thank you most warmly for giving us not only a, an exciting academic program, but also a wonderful social program uh, to go with it. Thank you very much.